out there and do some training. But okay. yeah, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an honor. Yeah. Okay, so today, today we're sitting here with Mike Sanda. I started uh, BJJ probably a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, and uh, finally got the balls to walk in and give it a shot. And Mike was my introduction into that. The perfect match for me, actually. Kind of motivated me and kind of took a different approach than I thought it was going to be. So, Mike, how long you been here? Uh, I've, I've been here for uh, 40, 46 years, or no, 44 years. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been on this this planet. <laughs> that long? Good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. As an earthling. <laughs> yeah. Or the, before that, I don't know, I think I was an egg or something, or, yeah. or, or, or half, of, half of an egg. Yeah. Um, so, but as far as jujitsu, I've been training. I've been training since I started training in two thousand and two. How old were you? When you um, I was twenty. Geez, that's a math. I think it was. I think I was twenty two. Yeah. Twenty two. Twenty two in, in two thousand and two, and it's two twenty two. Twenty twenty two now. So. Yeah. So. Um, what brought you in to start? Um, uh, the UFC and Bruce Lee, pretty much. Yeah. And pretty much the whole seventies uh, kung fu martial arts culture, uh, along with uh, just uh, various. Um, uh, Bruce Lee's arm bar and under the dragon. Oh sure, yeah, that was there. That was part of it. But it's basically just the, the fighting. And jujitsu wasn't the first uh, one that I tried. You know, I did taekwondo before uh, doing jujitsu. But it was just learning how to do martial arts. I always thought martial arts was really cool. Um, and then I eventually saw the UFC and saw how um, they they presented jujitsu to us, and it was very impressive what he's able to do. Yeah, Bruce Gracie in the UFC. Because um, up to that point, like if you were on your back, it was over. Yeah, it was just like, it, whatever you see, it's just like if, if the guy's standing and then all of a sudden there's some stuff happens and the guy's on the ground, it's like he's getting up and he's like bleeding or something. It's yeah. like, it's just, that's how fights seem to look. And then I even, even tested it, um, having done some Taekwondo, you know, I would, I would go um, on the college campus and just, uh, you know, drink a lot of uh, liquid courage and just, just be a, a loud jerk. Yeah. And then... Um, this is early on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Because you want to test it. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, well... And I you're did, young. It wasn't even consciously wanted to test yeah. it. It was just like when you train, you get a little bit of a bigger ego and then yeah. you walk around and you're a little bit louder and you're a little bit more of a jerk. And, you know, in a way, if I, would try, if I get that power as a child, you know, I don't really know how to wield it or anything like yeah. that. I think that's just the natural behavior of how like a little monkey would be like and I don't mean a monkey as like an old Japanese person who somebody might call me that you know <laughs> growing up hey you little monkey it's like uh, okay thanks um, but just as a as a simian you I know? wish monkey <laughs> ten times stronger than a man know, right? I'll take it you know and they don't uh, they aren't expected to have as much brain power so it's like yeah. the bar is lower so you know but um, uh, yeah so anyway so you, you try out your taekwondo did you get into it because you got bullied or because uh, you felt like you I think, I think that that stuff that I was just talking about that bullying stuff probably gave me a little bit more of an edge yeah. because it was sort of like um, if people were to treat me a certain way that I didn't feel like in my core like wasn't um, level or, 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 or even fair then I would either like you'd either want to confront the people directly or you would bury it and it would just be in there in some way and, it would and most of the time you bury it most yeah, people, I bury it of course because we live there's in a lot of pain in here there's a lot of pain in there it's just shuffling around yeah. I thought all humans are going through this and if it's one thing for me it's another thing for somebody else and I think it's just a natural uh, progression of life the way you you take in information like you'll, you'll ex have experiences that give you joy and they'll be you can't have joy without sadness like you it because you have to have context for the joy yeah you can't have light without dark. So no matter what we're what we're giving externally in our life, whether it's a good life or a bad life, whatever you want to frame it, see good life, bad, it's all subjective. Like you're still gonna have those those gaps in, in the relative differences in your experiences. Yeah. You know, either pleasurable or not pleasurable. So people are gonna suffer no matter what they have in this life. They in this in this comfort matrix, I keep calling it lately, you know, you're just getting shoveled like as much like pizza and energy you can almost say suffering is a gift in a way it is it's, yeah. it's it's a gift if your goal is to development yeah. you know it's your development and what's development to, to get bigger that's actually um something that's very dangerous if you get addicted to like this constant progression of power mm -hmm. that's that's in a way uh, gonna create problems for you because we have to understand it on, on a, the larger scale of everything you know if you zoom up, up a thousand feet you know, I mean, you, you could have whatever opinion of yourself as you like. You could be Mike Tyson or, or freaking King Tut, or you could go up a thousand feet. And we're just like very small. That's actually a Japanese approach. Yeah. Just solving problems. Or, or a pilot. away from the pro oh, a pilot. Yeah, yeah. You, you, look, you take off and it's just like there's... Oh, that's right. You were a pilot. Yeah, yeah. 
you like look down and it's just like, oh look, New York City is so small. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know. Did you ever um, see a flying saucer? Um, I've seen. Um, well, if I drink enough and go flying, then yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Drunk flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These freaking um, these uh, these drones, uh, you know, lately and everything, you know. But I think that the flying saucers exist in, in, um, in realms, realms beyond what our five senses are able to yeah, see. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, because because we're just like if you look at an amoeba or like. Uh, it's, it's like a lower organism. They're only able to experience their world or their reality to the extent that their physical like receivers are developed. Yeah. So an amoeba can't see us. Yeah. So we're effectively God to an yeah. amoeba. You know. And if I just like that, the the life could end. I don't know. Or, or it could just multiply. Maybe. Or maybe you can't even smush it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know. And so you know we have five senses, and if if there's if there's anything, and we're everything's energy all around us, and and we're made out of, of course, the empty space. We're made of at molecules and atoms that have space in between them. It's like, and the, the atoms are made of electrons and protons, and there's like space between that. So it's like, it's like we're just a bunch of empty space around here, and we're we can perceive things through our five senses, but any any energy that that is in between and that exists in that space, like we don't even have the ability to see it. Yeah. So so it's like, but you know, it's 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 there somehow. It's part of our world. Um, so how has BJJ affected you over all these years? Like, what's been the impact? Oh, and I know it's hard to measure. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I the, the value that I see in BJJ and in all martial arts, specifically BJJ, is what I chose um, to focus on, is that it is a like a mechanism or a pro, it's a process which we can sort of just participate in it and just uh, learn how to control like our our the workings of our inner self better for the purpose of feeling happy. Um, and what that involves is learning how to convert energy and that because that's what you're trying to do on the mat You're trying to convert energy right. all day long. So many guys trying to rush at you You're trying to convert the energy into a position where you're on top of them, you know, and this is easy to do Because it's mechanical, you know, and if we're doing that if, if it exists like kind of in this physical like context if you kind of apply it to like kind of internal mechanisms of how we process experiences uh, and how we interpret them as positive or negative, you can do the same thing with with um, with with how to um, just manage manage your how you feel on the inside yeah. too. I used to coach some people like lifting and paddling and things like that. And some sometimes the hardest person to coach were the ones that worked hard because because they worked hard. And sometimes the person who was like trying to find the easy route ended up being better because they always found the easy route, the most efficient route. That's funny. I, the point you mentioned that way yeah. because. Uh, growing up, uh, geez, I'm like making this conversation all about me. There's two people. No, that's what it's about. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not about me. But uh, I'll but interject here. And but, there. but, 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 but like, but to, but speaking of what you're saying, it's almost I can't resist because uh, we did. I did sports uh, growing up, you know, and I was always that guy that just w went in there and just just worked hard. And so, if there's any lessons to be learned uh, from something, I like I usually catch on to them late. You know, and, and because I just be sitting there just grinding. Or Do you it feel is. like you got more ownership of it that way? I feel like yeah, yeah. yeah. because because you learn it at, at a like sort of a visceral level through experience. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I'm listening to whatever like coach is saying, I'm just like, okay, thanks, coach, and just fucking drilling it, drilling it, drilling it, drilling it, drilling it. And when I start feeling the shifts and stuff, it's it's a shift from experience, from just training and working something for like a long period of time, and then and then feeling something, and then have, being like just accepting of it yeah but then at some point you know it winds up forcing an evolution because you just wind up um, getting exposed to different for, for me specifically it was like you just keep having faith in this but eventually like your faith in it gets broken yeah. because whatever it is that I was doing the world is, is not as narrow as that you know right and there's so you're gonna get effective. It's just like when you're doing your drills on the mat and then they resist 20 percent becomes exponentially more difficult it's not 20 yes. percent harder yeah yeah it's 100 percent harder yeah yeah and to, to what you're saying there that's why i feel like this this martial art is is the one that i chose and it's like not arbitrary it's it's because we practice in a way where we do expose ourselves to that full resistance every practice Every practice, and what are other martial arts does th does this? Maybe some some other grappling uh, martial arts. I think a lot of other martial arts you can't 
can't kick somebody in the head for right, exactly. as hard as you want. Exactly. You know, even if they were wearing something, they're going to get damaged. Yeah, that's not to say that like w there's no point in saying like one is better. No, than not, at it's all arbitrary, not at all. But as far as like the training and everything goes, like if you're allowed to, to or if you can train in a way, like realistically, and it's not allowed to or not allowed to, you can actually train as hard as you want, and but you're not like giving people contusions and things. Yeah, you can tear your muscles and things, but this is just what you do at the gym intentionally yeah. anyway when you lift weights. You're yeah. actually trying to tear your, yeah. your muscles. Um, then then you can actually have a martial art that that you can practice the way that you'd actually do it if you had to use it. Have you ever that had to use sense. it in a fight? Uh, you can use it for... for have you ever used it in a fight? In a, in a fight, uh, like fighting somebody, I have, you, I have had to use... Some of the stuff that I, the stuff that I was talking about in terms of self defense, right. in terms of defusing situations, absolutely yes. But I've never because of this because I've I I'm, I understand. Once you started really getting good at it, then did you find yourself going like, what am I doing? Trying to start fights? This isn't right. Yeah, because because when you practice this stuff, one of the the benefits is you become more self aware of you know of you know and your perception grows because you're having to balance things to practice that's why i feel like it's a, such a good vehicle or, or a methodology for training to to, to to kind of expand expand that um because it forces you to do it to do the activity um so the what i what i found that, that the most valuable thing from the training is to try to like kind of slow everything down and there's times where i've like been in a position where i felt almost justified to fight the guy fight a guy to like beat him up. I felt justified to do it. Be like, okay, I could see why somebody would want to beat him because I have the feeling like I would want to beat him up. But but I would I knew that just that that's not the outcome you know that I would want you know to, even if like I kind of imagine like somebody above me looking down on me and and judging me and being like maybe it's God yeah. thinking what is this guy doing? He's totally lost control of himself. Like he doesn't need to be beating that guy up right now. So. My favorite scene in Enter the Dragon, I think it's Enter the Dragon, yeah. is when Bruce Lee gets captured in a circular room mm -hmm. and the door's locked and everything shuts down and he yeah. sits down. Oh, yeah. And it's, <laughs> yeah. And it's, such, a, it's such a subtle scene. I don't think people really understand the, the message in that scene. The message is, what do you do when you can't fight? You don't fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was at, totally at peace. Mm -hmm. And he was met. He stopped. I, I Goosebumps yeah. talking about, but he stopped and meditated. Yeah. But like uh, the fighting scenes were incredible. Yeah. But for me, that scene right there that that. was the most incredible mm -hmm. scene there was. No panic. No nothing. Just. Yeah. Man, those. Th I gotta rewatch. I think he put those. his nunchucks over his neck <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> just chilled out. It's yeah. like, all right, what's coming next? I'm ready. Yeah. You know, that's that's um that's that's cool. I need to rewatch that. But um but yeah yeah um. That's uh, that's kind of how how I see it, like um, the value in it. So it, it's yeah, people like to work out to have to make their abs look a certain way. It's kind of dangerous, you know. You well, I think so anytime you're going for a visual, it's know, like it's when crazy. people would come to me and be like, "I want to lose five pounds." Yeah. I'd be like, "You're lost, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not about five pounds. Yeah. That's that's the least of your worries. Yeah. You got to find something you're passionate about, and yeah. it'll take its own life, and everything will take care of itself." My my strategy is to, to entertain that, to, to grant that wish. Yeah. You know, you're gonna get that with jujitsu, yeah. and then sort of hit him with all the other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, because if I start like bl blabbering and blabbering, they'd be like, "I don't know if this guy can help me lose that five pounds." <laughs> 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 So what's what's your journey? Where are you at now? Um, with your, with oh your man. school, I'm so I'm so psyched. I'm so psyched about about the school because I realized how, um, and not just this school, but just all jujitsu schools, you know how useful they are at being sort of like little beacons um, of like of human growth. You know, they you know, people go there and then they go there and then they they try this stuff out and they 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 get run over a little bit. And whether they're aware of a lot of the ideas I'm talking about or not, it doesn't matter. There's other other philosophies and things that that um, they're they're going to be um, presented different ways, uh, but they're all uh, helping people grow in some way or another, or they're giving people some comfort, you know. Comfort through discomfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Extreme discomfort. Totally. Yeah. You know, or or camaraderie of, of, with training or having something um, that they're that they can attach themselves to that they enjoy to do. You know, so it could be jujitsu. Because being be new it. at it, I can tell you when like there's a 210 pound guy laying on you, smothering you, and you can't breathe. 
Yes. You flash back to like your sister beating you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that's that's why the jujitsu schools are specifically super useful because you're not gonna get that from going to a pottery class or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, you can you can go there, you guys. You can go to a jujitsu class and have somebody lay on top of you and try to smother you. Um, and but you won't die. Right. You won't die. <laughs> beauty in it. Yeah. Beauty in it. You won't die. And so um, I remember when I was first one of my first classes or second third maybe. I came to a class, this guy, I think it was Bob. Yeah. Bob was smothering the shit out of me. And yeah. I'm like, tap. He goes, no, you can't tap yet. Yeah, so he was enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. He was enjoying it. I'm like, okay, because I didn't know when to tap. Like, yeah. When do you tap? Yeah. Um, honestly, that's that's going to be whenever you feel like you need. For me, personally, like if I feel like I'm put in a, in a position where I can't I can't move anymore and the guy's putting pressure on me that, that's going to cause me physical uh, damage, you know, then I'm, I'm going to tap out of position like and for, for me specifically, it's like you have to have a pretty tight um, control position, like a submission position in yeah. order to get that. But now if you're just starting out, and the reason is is because I, I just know how to look for angles to, to decrease the pressure on me to constantly try to escape. Like you become, like Bruce Lee's talking about becoming like water all the time. Yeah. Sometimes becoming water is just knowing the escape routes. And so if you know the escape routes and it's like, okay, I just got to keep working, I got to keep working. But then people are trying to close the doors on you, oh, those escape routes on you, and so that's, that's, just, that's just the jujitsu happening. I had an epiphany in like one of the classes in my last class when we did those, we did like eight rounds mm -hmm. our last session. And I was doing a lot of like, um, when I went home with my buddy, he was working on uh, arm bars and I was doing arm bars drills with him, you know what I mean? Where you pop up on the chest, yes. and then you go right, pop up on the chest, you go left, and you just keep going back and forth. And I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, I know I need to be doing these drills, but what are the odds of me being able to pull this off? Mm. And I'm like, well, you got to do them. But I re then I realized when I did that, uh, when we did those all that rolling that day, it's not you're not just doing it to pull it off. You're doing it to recognize it when somebody's going to do it to you. Yes, that's true. And I think that's a big thing that's missed as far as like my understanding of it was like all about well. You know, yeah, I'm doing this, but God, it's going to be a year. It's going to be ten years before I can pull yeah. these things off. But it, it, a lot of it for me you remember, was. You remember the five pounds you're talking about? Yeah. That's your five pounds. Yeah. Because you're like, I want to hit it, or I want to escape it. It's like a thing, you know. But what if, what if doing that movement is literally just teaching you how to move your body? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Then, then you get, then you, no matter whether you get hit or by the move or not, or you hit it or you get hit by it, just the fact that you did the drilling, it's like, oh, cool, I can, I can shift my weight better, yeah. or I can, I can recognize the opportunity better. Like if the guy puts his hands up, like, boom, you turn. So then you recognize opportunities in life, you move better in life, you know, you might move better, you might see opportunities better. So so it's like, you could, maybe you're never gonna hit an arm bar. I don't know, if you hit an arm bar, you I already hit one. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> so you got your five pounds already. I still think it was fluke, but I'll, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, heck I yeah. actually said, I, I had the guy, I was gonna, I was mounted, I'm like, I wonder if I could hit an arm bar. And he said something and I hit it and I just, Jumped up. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if I distracted him verbally, but then I started thinking that's part of the joust. It is. That's part of the joust. It is. And I, you should use it more or yeah. use it less. Sometimes, because I know that that works. I had this joke with this dude. I used to roll with this dude. His name was Justin. He lives in Michigan now. But we would roll and he would just tell jokes and stuff or he would like talk when he was doing jokes and then I, when he was rolling and I would like always feel like I wanted to respond to him because we're freaking rolling and he's talking to me and we're still rolling. And he would, he would beat me up in the middle of me talking to him, he would beat me up because I wasn't focused on, on mm. what I was doing. And so like that speaks to like what jujitsu is. It's like, you, seriously, you have to be focused and engaged in this stuff. So it, it, that's one, one of the ways, and I, I can't believe I talked about how useful this stuff is without mentioning this, but when you roll, what it is, it's meditation. You know, it forces you, because meditation, like you sit here, you gotta focus your mind like you know it's it, but it's it's like the, the challenge in this is to try to, to maintain that focus and be patient enough to sit there and not get bored and go off and do something else but with jujitsu like they're really they're, the person's attacking you so your partner is, is forcing you to remain focused on what you're doing the whole time wow. yeah. So, yeah because otherwise he's gonna beat you up and you don't want that to happen and so so you're just focused focus focus so you're just sitting there for like literally eight rounds like intensely focused on something that's so valuable. It takes so much out of you. It's not even yes. funny. Like I was going to come to the noon class too, and I was like, yeah. when I was done, I was like, I can't even do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, as as you improve the goal, like so, we practice this for a couple different reasons. I like to make it very simple with the triangle. You know, so you train for self defense for the sport of it, but also for uh, the art of it, like the martial arts of it. And so the art for me is how do I accomplish the same the same thing or the same game that I want to do with less and less energy. 
you know, and usually it's more air and more efficient movement is the way it's sort of the formula I've been working with. And so just make sure the breathing is good. Make sure you're efficient with your movement. You're not trying to like uh, overpower some movement, uh, you know, some some techniques and things. And uh, you just try to try to be as efficient as possible. Um, even if you get your butt kicked, if if I if I if I get caught in something, it's like man, your your traps are. are I think what I've learned is like tiring. everybody has something. Yeah. That is like there, there was one guy I could move around really well, the only guy, but like I couldn't submit him. Mm. He wouldn't submit even when I had him in position. Right. Like, and I was like, wow, man, this guy's legit. Yeah, they're, they're focused you know, on it, the it defense, changed, you. It changed. Know. It changed my mind. It like opened my mind all the way up. And like everybody brings something to the table that's mm. different. To what you were just saying is a, a way that you can. Um, it's like a a way that you can continue to feel like some reward or some progression through your jujitsu training, even though. There might be long periods of time where you can't like beat certain Quantify. people in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is is kind of trying to um, go for these small victories. You know, if 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 you just focus on, uh, let's say you come in and get your you, you get beat up or something, then you just want to get a little bit less beat up each day, and maybe that's just being more conscious of your breathing. I just try to give the guy a problem. If yeah, I can just make him think for a second, yeah. I feel like that's an accomplishment. Yeah, I'm so new at it. You know? So how do you get beat up less? Yeah, you just yeah. keep attacking their balance. Yeah. Just attack their balance, attack their balance with breath so you don't get, make, get too tired. You know? So what do you see moving forward for your, your score? Uh, I try to focus like day by day like on the present because if I don't know what we're going to grow into. Well, I don't know what let's do this. Into. Look at it like it's five years later Yeah. and you're looking back on today's conversation yeah. and how did today's conversation, conversation impact where you want to go in five years okay. because you can have an idea of where you want to go yeah. and that can change 40 times that's okay yeah. but it's important for the ship I think to have some type of, of vision of where you want to go you know so if you if you put it that way then I would have to say in five years then I would like to accomplish uh, total world peace <laughs> 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 through the expansion of ideas that we deliver through great training you know and we can do it now because well, we've got I think artificial the way to do intelligence. that would be get everybody on a level where they can almost be exactly the same fighting level, and then nobody would want to fight. And so everybody would just respect each other. Because it would just be hour and hour and hour. If you fought, yes. it'd be like eight hours. Yes. You know. And, yes. And you so feel like nine hours. Pe people would go around just having just massive respect. And then you'd for have no jujitsu schools where you go and you don't do jujitsu. It would be called. It would be called just. Um, it would be called just. Uh, it wouldn't even. Be, be called jujitsu anymore. It yeah. would transcend jujitsu because jujitsu is some samurai methodology for, for murdering each other if you don't have your sword. But so but it but it's also gentle art. So we could just change the name to gentle art. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we could just change the name to gentle art. All right, man. Great training. <laughs>